Uh, Mage Seeker Insider is going up one health. Uh, get plus two, plus two, and you cast a six cost spell. Um, I have no idea if this got nerfed at some point or another. Uh, I honestly don't recall. Uh, I think this is fine, though. I think the the payoff on this is expensive enough. Uh, and yes, you can play a six drop spell the turn before you play this, hypothetically, and then have a six six. But the difference between a six six and a six five, uh, as far as removal goes, isn't insane, um, because most of the time, if you're playing a 6-5 a, a or a 6-6 six, six on turn 4, your opponent's going to be blocking with something that has 2 or 3 attack power. Um, if it has 3 attack power, a three cost, uh, a, a, a burn for 3 is going to remove it. Uh, this is essentially giving you a little bit of protection of, against the burn for 2s if they, um, if they don't have a big enough unit to block with. But once again, you have to you have to have payoff. You have to be playing six cost spells. You have to happen to have the six cost spell before you even play this to play this on curve as a six six. Um, I think it's going to feel really good when it comes up, unless they're introducing a bunch more cards to enable that. There aren't a lot of cards in the deck that you're rushing to play. A lot of the six shot spells that Damasha cares about. Um, they wait to play until later anyways. So we'll see how this one goes. Um, but I think this buff is fine. I don't think that's going to push this card over the edge. I think they're trying to help a um, an archetype that isn't seeing a lot of play. And I think it's smart to buff a supporting unit because um, Lux is fine. It's just um, not seeing play because there isn't enough additional support. And maybe minor buffs like this to additional support will help. Um, a one attack buff to Lauren to Bladekeeper. Yeah, this is fine. Um, I think it's completely reasonable to say I get a, uh, over-costed 3-3 three, three that buffs a unit. Um, you compare this to Ionia where they, they get a 3-1 for one mana cheaper that buffs your whole hand for plus one. Uh, even if you're only averaging three cards in hand, it means it's buffing for one more across, but spread across the units. Um, and it's giving up health, but it has a mana discount to it. This requires you to have a unit in play already. Um, it costs an extra mana for you. I think this is a completely fair um, buff to the unit. It just makes it able to trade a little bit better because it can block fearsome units now. And um, look at Shruma. They have, they have four three fearsomes for three. This four drop can now come down, buff something that couldn't answer the 4-3, and then be able to trade with the 4-3 himself. But it is a one mana higher cost, so um, I think that's fine. Um, this might make the seed more play, actually, um, just because of the interaction with Fearsome. Uh, I don't think it's going to push it over the edge in any way, unless there's some Dimash and Aggro deck that's been lurking in the shadows, and that one point makes a huge difference, and this is kind of played as a finisher. But um, honestly... Even if you consider this as a, a, a four mana five five, all things said and done, uh, a four mana five five that's contingent on two of its stat points on you must have something in play. Uh, I think it's totally fine, and um, yeah, I don't think it's an issue. The game's changed a lot, and uh, the power level of cards is just different. And uh, unless they announce some sort of rotation, the only way they're going to keep some cards relevant is to. Keep them fresh and do minor things like this. Howling Abyss is getting a 1-mana uh, buff. This is actually huge. There are many, many times I'm playing a Howling Abyss deck where I, like, have a perfect opportunity to play it, and I'm 1-mana short, and I'm like, man, I wish it was uh, I wish it was next turn. And then that, that following turn, it's just, it's no longer safe to play it, and I don't get it down. And, um, and as I say before, that I was playing a Sivir deck that was functioning pretty well. It's a Sivir Howling Abyss deck, and uh, between the Sivir getting the buff and the Howling Abyss getting a buff, I'm really excited for that deck. It was already performing okay against a lot of the, the metagame, um, and that's going to shift because the metagame is going to shift. But um, I think this is completely reasonable. I know Howling Abyss can blow out games, but you are getting a random champion. Uh, most level 2 champions are good, but there are some that are complete whiffs. You get a level 2 Teemo, um, and unless you have some source of puff caps all it is is a 2-2 two -two elusive for one it literally does nothing because uh it can't shuffle mushrooms in your deck when your deck's empty uh of mushrooms um 
some level twos are also just not as dangerous. Uh, Zoe level two can be really good because you get a free invoke with her, but uh, you don't get her leveling effect. And so that one doesn't feel as insane. Um, and, you know, I could go on and on. There's a there's a whole list of just, like, uh, level twos not being crazy. Um, honestly, all the level one, um, or all the one cost champions, I I would go on the record saying um, aren't crazy to go off Howling Abyss. You hit a Fizz off Howling Abyss, and most of the time you probably aren't very happy with that you, uh, because you're playing this on six mana um, and then waiting a turn. If the first thing you hit is one of those less um, impactful cards, you better hope that your board is okay or your hand is full of answers because this is pretty late in the game anyways. Um, it adds a little bit of credibility to playing the card, and using it as a finisher, but I don't think it puts it over the edge. And if it does, they'll revert it. But um, the more champions that go in the game and dilute the pool too, the the less of a problem this becomes because not all champions are created equally. Some of them are insane at level two, and some of them um, do something really cool for the archetype they're they're in, and not much else. Um, Because the same thing goes for Pike, right? Pike is really understated unless you're playing, um, unless you're playing Lurk cards. Uh, Rek'Sai is really understated unless you're playing Lurk cards. Getting either of those at level two is just bad. So uh, that's another couple bad cards in the pool. I guess Rek'Sai is okay because it has a big health pool, but it would have very low attack, and uh, the Pike is just would just be garbage. The Pike would be arguably worse than getting a random unit of the same cost uh, if your deck wasn't designed to use the pike the way pike's meant to be used so um at this time i think this is fine because there are enough bad hits that even if a crazy hit on uh, uh off of this immediately can be feel bad for your opponent i don't think the crazy hits are consistent enough and i think that if you have the um, ability to play this and then immediately follow up with the champion, you've earned it because you're committing a lot of to by doing six mana, do nothing until next turn, and then still need to commit whatever mana cost the unit I've been given is before you've made an impact to the game in any way besides your opponent wanting to wanting to remove this card. Um so yeah, it's it's still the potential is a, is a very strong finisher card and uh, when Howling Bisc goes off, it can feel really good. I don't think the one mana difference is going to make someone feel bad, though. Um, I think it's going to help an archetype that um, isn't seeing enough play, and I don't think it's going to push it over the edge. Uh, Ren Shadowblade, getting a one attack buff. I, yeah, this is fine. Um, I think... Like they're saying, they're trying to push the identities a little bit more, and Ionia generating that card advantage um, a little bit more consistently because four with quick attack is more likely to not be traded into successfully. Uh, I think that's completely fine. He still, as a blocker, just will die. Um, his health didn't change. I think that's pretty fair. Shadow Fiends can be really strong, but they're also, you know one one and done plays unless you're building synergy with them um hopefully this lets this card see a little bit more play than just some memes we'll see though um probably not enough dancing droplet uh loses a tune this is actually massive uh this is going to slow down aurelia's ear so 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 much um they can no longer protect droplet and immediately play Droplet. Um, on turn two, at least. Um, they're no longer going to be able to s cycle through cards and not feel like they're wasting... Um, and, and, you know, not waste mana in the process, essentially. Um, it's still going to be a really good cycle mechanic to recall. It's I think it's still going to serve its function really well. Uh, it's just going to feel a lot more fair when they do it now, because um, it's going to slow them down... Um, by, you know, a turn early, but the later it goes, the more and more they get slowed down, because that is a, uh, that is, you know, several 
points of mana in one round, if you're able to recall this several times, that they're no longer getting. Um, other decks don't play it as much as it really is here. It does hurt a little bit for Ionia as a faction. Um, notably, their landmark um, comboed really well with it, where you could essentially draw a card once per turn for free. Now you actually are committing a mana to doing so. Uh, I think that's fair, though, um, and yeah, you're still coming a landmark slot, which is rough, but drawing a card to turn is still really strong. I still think if a deck wants to do it, they're going to play it. I still think Irelia Azir will probably play this card because a 1-1 one -one elusive is good, being able to draw cards is good, and they still want to play their recall cards anyway. Uh, but this card just became a lot more fair, and I think that this nerf is um, a lot more massive than it looks at face value because... The things you want to do with this all want the spell mana that you would get from a tune, and that's no longer a factor. Um, some decks that played this may, may cut this now. Um, it really depends on um, the reason they were playing it. If they were playing it as a filler card and nothing else, it might get cut. Um, but... I think it's still fine. It's still an elusive unit that costs one with an upside if you happen to re uh, if it happens to be recalled. Um, it's no longer an auto include in anything that has recall cards necessarily. Um, you 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 would gauge it by your card advantage you're already developing. Uh, I would personally auto include it in almost everything with recall because I love drawing cards. Um, but some people might some people might actually cut it just saying like that slot just is too hard to make room for them when they aren't giving me that mana. And if nothing else, Irelia is here. Uh, they have definitely been slowed down. Between the champions and this right here, they have been slowed down quite a bit. They can still play the way they play. Um, I think the deck will still be okay, actually, at this rate. Um, but this card was one of the biggest reasons they could go off. Um, they could keep a relatively bad hand as long as they had a Dancing Droplet and an, and something to start uh, powering its engine. And they could still technically do that, but they're going to do it a lot more slowly. And if you make Aurelia Azir wait a few turns to do damage, a lot of time that's all you needed if you were playing a mid-range or control deck to get a relative enough threat out to stop them from winning the game. Um, I think this nerf is actually more impactful on Irelia Azir than uh, the Irelia or the Azir nerf is. Um, it is possible that the deck loses enough consistency from this nerf that they revert one of the champion nerfs, but I doubt it because those champions were so hated. <laughs> uh, Green Glade Lookout is getting a one health buff. Uh, I really like this buff. Um, once again, they're trying to push this like faction identity of being able to generate a little bit of value in Ionia. And especially if they're doing something like this, where they're taking away a little bit of the value here because it fit in too well with other things. This is a great way of uh, going about it because this only discounts units. Uh, it only discounts strikes. And... It's always your most expensive unit in hand. So if you just draw something more expensive than whatever you've been trying to discount, it stops synergizing with yourself. Plus, you know, we've been dealing with a bunch of people cheating out these insane units the whole time, and it's never because they're discounting the units. Um, although, you know, sometimes they do do that a bit where they uh, discount by giving Ephemeral to get Scythria on board, on board a little bit sooner um, through a cheat. But... For the most part, um, the cheating that you see happen in the game right now is a lot less fair than this. This is a pretty fair version of cheating because you have to have what you want to cheat in your hand. You have to not draw a unit that's more expensive than it as you're decreasing its costs. And uh, you have to continue landing strikes, which means you either need to commit cards to keeping this alive or... Uh, somehow prevent your opponent from blocking it, or do things like give it quick attack uh, while your opponent can't trade into it if it has quick attack, things like that. Um, I think this is a good buff for the support archetype, actually, because things like Young Witch, which I see right below, looks like it got a health buff as well. 
um, can support this. And uh, I don't know if one health will make enough difference because there's plenty of removal that can still deal with that. But if nothing else, if I really is, you're keep seeing play. That's one extra strike against the sword, and that's huge. Uh, and that could be enough. Uh, Young Witch got a one health buff, like I just pointed out from above. Um, I think that's that's great. I think uh, that's the kind of thing you want to see on these support units. I think it's really important that the design of support cards, um, if they want to tune them up but not put them overboard, is to give them a little bit more health and survivability. Uh, because a lot of time what happens is they have to throw away their lives in order to support a unit. Uh, Young Witch being one of the things that was a little bit safer to that, and now is a lot safer because the most common elusive unit in the game on turn one can no longer trade with this. Um, which feels really good to know that I'm not going to just lose my Young Witch to a Dancing Droplet if I play her on curve. Uh, they have rebuffed Will of Iona ba uh, Ionia back to four mana. Uh, this is another case of this might frustrate players enough that this gets reverted. However, I think Ionia actually needs it. I think that as a whole, this is probably fine. Removal has changed a lot since um, since this nerf happened. And the fact that Targon can just say, your stuff doesn't exist anymore for six mana on a, relative, on a relatively consistent basis, plus you know, a couple other more expensive removal pieces, but also do great removal effects. Uh, made, it, made it seem really unfair compared to other factions that should be good at things like this, like Ionia. And um, if you want to make sure that Targon doesn't feel good at everything, one of the best ways of doing that is letting factions that are supposed to feel good at it be better at it than Targon. And um, the one mana difference wasn't enough, especially when they aren't hard removing. But with a... T but w but with a two mana difference saying now I can recall your unit for four or in Targon get rid of it for six, that that's great. And it's it's a minor buff to Yasuo because it means that a, a, a recall card is more playable. And uh, if you're not aware, this card saw plenty of play when it was a four cost uh, card. It's just at five cost, it had a little bit too much value. Or at, at four cost, it had too, a little bit too much value at the time they removed it. At five cost... Uh, it didn't get you value often enough, and to be fair, a lot of the good mid-range champions in the game cost 3 and 4 uh, mana, so you, you were overspending at 5, you're still overspending at 4 if they cost less than you 4 mana, um, but you you are you know buying an attack, and that's where some of the mana, mana value comes in, but now being able to say, oh, um, I can recall your, uh, your 4 cost Shivana for 4 mana, um, but I also cost you an attack action. Uh, it's quite good, and this will definitely see play again. It saw play last time around. Um, I don't think the game's changed enough for this card to not see play this time around. I don't know if it pushes it over the edge like it was once upon a time. I think that the game's changed enough that it's possible that this cost reduction back to four is safe now. Um, it is something to be concerned about, though, because... Cards like this being played make high index less playable. Uh, the more cards you see that have value like this, where you can recall a unit for a low cost, uh, the harder it is to justify playing something that costs you 7 8 mana that doesn't do something as it enters play because they could spend half as much mana as you and uh, take away what you've just done. Um, Luckily, Arroyan Soul already has Spell Shield. If Arroyan Soul did not have Spell Shield, this card going back to 4 mana could potentially actually make him unplayable. Because he has Spell Shield, I think it's fine. They're still going to have to commit a second card into it. Um, and if they, if all they're doing is recalling him, then they're resetting his Spell Shield for you. Um, and obviously, you know, if he's swinging at you and going to kill you, you do what you got to do. But I think, um, I think the units that are most worried about this aren't seeing a massive amount of play right now anyway, um, such as Anivia. Um, and the changes above don't indicate to me that those champions would see more play. Uh, this is also going to be a good answer against Trendemir, who just got that buff. Um, so this might hurt Trendemir coming back and seeing play, but 
I think as a whole this will be fine. This is going to be pretty good against Thresh Nasus, actually. Um, yeah. Overall, um, I think it'll be okay. Um, we'll have to see what the metagame wants to do, though. If the metagame is, ends up falling into a mid-range to controlling um, format, this card might feel too strong depending on what the average cost of uh, units are and what they're doing when they enter play. If the game stays on a more aggressive facing like it is now, which I'd be surprised if it stayed too aggro because uh, they made a lot of changes here. Um, so unless Lurk completely keeps aggro relevant, and Lurk, Lurk honestly feels like a um, like an ag aggro mid-range hybrid where it's kind of aggressive, but you're actually going to be finishing more in a mid-range, um, you know, turn five or six, maybe even seven rather than turn three or four. Um, so we'll see. I think it's fine. The format will dictate if this is an issue. Uh, Twin Disciplines going down to two mana. Um, this is great for Ionia. Um, that is a huge buff to the card. Um, this card's definitely going to see play in like anything that plays Ionia now. Uh, it's possible it's overtuned just because the three damage burst for for two. On its own isn't an issue, but um, you can play it with like a lot of other things, like noxious cards that also go um, into burst speeds um, and get a lot of potent damage. And you can you can combine this a lot more easily now with things like Karma, who just got you know a mana cost reduction to protect her more efficiently, or OTK with something you already had out more efficiently, but. They're talking about wanting to push Ionia into its identity a bit better, and uh, Twin Disciplines is very much one of those things. Um, this card's always been insanely flexible, though, so I'm a little worried about this one. This one's on my watch list of maybe reverted. Uh, it's definitely going to see a lot of play now. Anything that's playing Ionia and cares about buffing uh, units is going to play this card, probably as a three of. Um, you're not going to see a better buff in the game. It protects you from removal, it gets you your extra damage when you need damage. Uh, notably, this is a minor nerf to Heimerdinger, um, not in slash buff, depending, I guess, you, you call it like a lateral change, because uh, the fact you can play it more easily means you can protect Heimerdinger more easily, the fact that it costs two means you're going to get a turret that on average is lower quality, uh, so there are pros and cons to this for someone who's playing Heimerdinger, uh, but I think Heimerdinger decks, if they're in Ionia, are going to play this as a 3 of. And Heimerdinger with Ionia, uh, back in the day, was the way to play the deck, um, especially because that's where a lot of your, uh, counter spells are. And I think that this buff may have locked in the fact that you're going to want to play that specific combo if you're playing a Heimerdinger deck. Um... More, even more excited to play Heimerdinger seeing this, honestly, even though um, the turn I'm getting is probably going to be worse on average. Good good decision here. I think this is just a good flavor decision. This character uh, cares about reputation and didn't generate reputation themselves as an 8-drop. There's literally no reason this thing shouldn't have had the 5 attack. Um, I get it costs 6 if you have reputation, but the whole point is that it goes with the reputation theme. It should be able to synergize with the other cards that carry if you have a five attack unit. Things like five attack units, five plus attack units strike a thing and removal um, against things. And uh, will that one point make a difference for if this card gets played in the deck? Probably not because you're not playing him to get the reputation in the first place. You are playing him for the rally if you're playing him. So I think the decks that would... that played him as a one of will probably keep playing him as one of i think the decks that weren't playing him probably won't add him um but for flavor purposes of nothing else i think that that this one point buff was important because anything that's reputation themed should at least have a genuine attempt at statting for reputation all right city breaker is getting an attack buff to one attack uh I think this is, I think this is a very good buff, actually. Um, I still don't know if Noxious is going to want to play this, because uh, at this time, even though they've introduced some new cards for Noxious that are more late game uh, 
cards, uh, like that new 10 drop that's coming out. Um, everything said and done, four mana. This is very, very slow for Noxious. It doesn't do damage until round start. Even if you attack with it the turn you play it and land a hit, it's one point of damage. Noxious is notorious for doing very big, heavy swings um, with you know, five attack units with low health or things that hurt their own units to hurt you. Uh, this doesn't do either of those things. It's just a consistent form of damage. This might see some sort of play in like a Noxious uh, and Bilgewater Plunder deck now that it has a little bit of extra stat. Uh, but I don't think this is enough to make anyone want to play this card specifically. Um, it makes it better against things like Aurelia's Ear, but if you're playing a card with this stat line and this l this low of an influence of an effect on turn four against Aurelia's Ear, uh, your deck's probably losing against it anyways, in all honesty. Um, at least previous Aurelia's Ear. We'll see how fast it is now. But um, yeah, nothing wrong with this buff. I don't think the buff's going to fix the card. I think the card is still borderline unplayable unless you're playing a very fringe thing that really cares about doing the one damage every turn. You know, Sejuani likes it, uh, Gangplank likes it, Plunder in general likes it. If you really, really, really just need a couple pings for whatever reason and you have a slot to fill, maybe you throw it in as a one of. Um, it's a good target for Noxion cards that make you damage your own units, but that's never been enough to make it see play, and I don't think that one attack is going to make a change. Uh, Jay is being buffed to a 5-5. Five five. Um, yeah, I like this buff. Um, his effect doesn't come up often enough. He, The bigger the threat he is, the more likely that this effect is going to matter. Um, both a 4-4 four four is less likely to be targeted than a 5-5 five five because it's... A, less of a threat, but also, you know, he, uh, he has to survive in the first place, and, uh, you're less likely to survive with a one health difference. Do I think this makes this, makes him playable? Uh, I doubt it. The reason you would play him before would be that you target him yourself to draw cards, and I don't think the extra 1-1 one, one in stats is going to be worth it. When you uh, still have to commit six mana to him, plus whatever you're committing to target him to draw a single card, uh, it takes him too long for him to generate value. I think he needed um, he needs like a keyword or something else about him, like when I'm targeted and survive, draw a card, um, draw an additional card at the beginning of the next turn, maybe. Uh, or, like, if I'm still alive um, at the beginning of the next turn, draw an additional card, even if it's draw an additional card with Fleeting. Something like that might actually make him see play, because then you can generate some extra card advantage, and you would actually force your opponent to target him. And if you built the deck around it, you could do some cool things. You're like, well, now I'm going to, you know, no, I'm going to target him again and protect him. And you could have this, like, crazy snowball exchange where your opponent's targeting him, and you're targeting him. And even if they are able to finally remove him to stop the uh, beginning of turn effect, uh, you would draw a bunch of cards in the exchange and kind of refill your hand. That could be a really cool, like, archetype um, that Jay could support and create, you know, decks that care about drawing and stuff like that. Um, but without giving him that wording, without giving him that, that extra effect I just listed as a potential solution... Um, I don't see it. And the more I think of the more I think I, I I think I would really enjoy to see him with an effect like that. And I think with an effect that, that the four four stat line would maybe even be fine if it's just like if I'm still alive at the beginning of the next round, draw an additional card, uh with or without give it fleeting. I think give it fleeting would be important to uh to not make him ridiculous, uh, especially because of the crazy exchanges you could have. But I think that'd be a really fun thing, and at six mana, um You'd either have to wait really long to play him and start those exchanges, or you'd only be able to protect him one or two times. Um, but I digress. That's not what this card is. This card is what we're seeing in front of us, and uh, what we're seeing in front of us um, 
It's probably still unplayable. If it sees play, it's going to be very fringe play. It's going to be for some sort of meme or some sort of uh, interesting combo someone has discovered that I don't know about. Uh, don't think Jay is making any lists anytime soon. He's understated and underabilityed for his cost um, before and after the buff. This, though, this might see play. That one health, as I have mentioned many, many times already, um, is a huge, huge difference. Uh, knowing that it can survive most removal spells one time means that you could commit to playing him, giving him elusive off of like a, a Sumpworks map or whatever, and attacking and generating another unit, even if they... Um, even if they're able to ping him down to make it easier to kill the copy, you have successfully done the five damage, generate a copy, and now they have to answer two copies that have one or two health. Um, I don't think it's to see a lot of play, but I think this actually makes it a playable stat line. I think this makes it a, a decent top-end finisher that is fairly protectable, especially when you consider the fact that Twin Disciplines got a buff and... Uh, Piltover and Ionia work very well together, and now you're able to make this guy a 5-6 the turn you bring him down just by having two floating spell mana. Um, and uh, you can't give him elusive and, and protect him like that unless you're playing him on 6 with 3 mana, but I mean, yeah, six, on 6 with 3 mana, you give him elusive, you swing with him, um, they may have removal, but if it's not hard removal, there's a good chance the Twin Discipline saves him. And you make an exact copy, and you have two elusive units that uh, can kind of cascade out of control. He can be a really cool kind of uh, finisher slash build around card. Um, and I think the one health really does make a huge difference to um, to the odds of playing this card in a deck. Um, too soon to tell what the format's going to look like, but I think this is playable now. Beforehand, I thought it was kind of fringe. Now I think it's actually just. You could splash this into a deck. You don't even have to um, put buffs or anything in said deck if if you just need like a one or two of spot and it fits in your mana curve. He's a really good thing to force your opponent to need answers uh, or suffer the consequences. So yeah, kind of exciting buff. Uh, Rummage, getting a nerf to two mana. This is a huge nerf for a lot of things. Most notably... This is a massive nerf to the Jinx discard archetype. Um, Jinx was... Jinx, is, or not was, but is not the best version of the Draven deck out there right now. Draven Ezreal has been frustrating players a lot more. But Jinx has been seeing some play in those variants, which is why they mentioned like the Draven decks, and this is them... This is a form of acknowledging the Draven decks, because... A two mana commit to throwing away Axis instead of a one mana commit is not insignificant. Um, also, it makes this a less splashable card. Some decks are still going to play it, obviously, uh, but it has become less of an auto include when you just go, you know, I'm playing a mono uh, a, a mono deck, but you know, I have some stuff that's kind of like I'm only playing this as a hate card, and uh, I'm playing a handful of hate cards and ways to search for the hate cards. And I need ways of tossing them out of my hand. And um, a lot of time, if you were doing that in a faction, um, Rummage was kind of your go-to. You'd be like, well, yeah, I can play a little bit of P and Z, play a couple of the units, discard a card, and draw me a card, play some Rummages, and um, uh, use it to both dig for my answers as well as discard my answers that aren't relevant in my matchup. And this is going to um, make P and Z a little bit less splashable, but... PNZ is still one of the best factions to splash. You splash PNZ for its burn spells, and its burn spells are still going to be burn spells. Uh, but there are some decks that really cared about having the rummage that didn't care as much about the PNZ other cards, and um, they might have to look elsewhere for what they're doing and not use the rummage anymore. This is also just going to slow down a lot of uh, the decks that like to do filtering, and um, it's it's sad for some things like. Uh, the sump, the sump workers that, um, that are always Mimi and like when they go off, they're really fun. This hurts their consistency and they're already an inconsistent deck, but, um, 
this is one of those cards that just it uh, it hasn't aged well with the game. The the more the game develops, the stronger this card felt. And I think this is going to be a good nerf for it. I think it's still completely playable, but I think you have to think about including it in your deck instead of auto-including it when you have a couple of vacancies. Uh, because a lot of time what you would do beforehand, even if you didn't necessarily need the draw, is you build out your deck and you'd go, oh, I have two slots open, what do I add? And you kind of look through, not see anything you really need, and you just throw a couple of rummages in because your worst case scenario is, is that you toss uh, cards that aren't good in the matchup. And yeah, it at two mana... Do you still auto-include them as a filler card? Maybe, depending on your deck, but it's not an always-include anymore. And uh, beforehand, anything I was in, in P and Z uh, in a major way, I think, would always have rummage. And now, it's something I have to consider. Um, and anything, anytime you're generating cards that you can just throw away, it's still going to be fine. Um, but those decks that don't generate as many cards and just wanted it for the draw... They're going to be a lot less happy to play it, too, than they are at 1, and um, I'm interested to see on how it affects those decks the most, honestly. Uh, but this will hurt uh, Ezreal Draven, this will hurt Ezreal Jinx. Um, like I said, it hurts Jinx a lot more than it hurts Ezreal. Um, with Ezreal, it's more just for digging for your answers, and uh, yeah, you gotta commit extra mana, but okay, they're committing an extra mana. With Jinx, that's you committing an extra mana to level Jinx, which makes it a lot harder because that deck doesn't do well with saving spell mana. A lot of the time you're saving only one spell mana um, because you missed a turn one play or because you played a, a, a two drop on three or whatever. And um, that means that being able to level Jinx the turn you drop her um, is not impossible. It's it's You could still save mana and make it happen, but the odds are definitely lower now because... You're unlikely to have two spell mana the turn you play Jinx um, in order to make this go off. So uh, I think I think overall good good decisions. I don't think this will be reverted. I think this is going to live at two mana forever. Maybe even gets changed at some point down the road in some way. But uh, as worded and as the game currently exists, I think two mana is completely fine for this card. Uh, it will still see play in the decks that want it. Uh, you'll see less play in the decks that used it as filler. Try being being nerfed to five. Um, I have mixed feelings about this. Slowing down the tri beam is great. However, it was very, very, very rare they'd play it on four. So the cost hurts what they can do in a turn and, you know, the following turns if they have spell mana um, afterwards. But it doesn't hurt the strength of the card. I think the way that they needed to acknowledge Tribeam and Probulator um, is actually to be that the summoning effect is tied to the unit. What you would do is you'd ward it like a, like um, the Barrel Barge, whatever it's car called, where it's a I summon... It, that The card that says uh, I summon... Um, powder kegs equal to the damage you dealt. You do that with this. It's it still is the scaling damage, and it does. And it says summon a unit equal to the damage, uh, uh, equal in cost to the damage you dealt, uh, which causes a lot of interesting interactions because um, it means that if they sacrifice the unit, you don't you don't get the unit. Uh, it means if they throw a barrier up, you don't get the unit. It means if they have tough, you get a different costed unit, which could cause some interesting syner uh, synergies and uh, and type, type things. You could intentionally overcharge it by one, anticipating a tough unit to get a more desirable unit. Um, really, the, the problem with this card has always been that it generates too much value, and um, because that value is being generated even if the burn is missing, I think it's still going to be really strong. I think it's still going to generate a lot of value. Um, it's possible because other things are being nerfed that this is fine. We'll we'll see. Uh, I won't be surprised if this isn't a big enough nerf and if players are still frustrated to play against this card. Um, it's still going to feel awful to top deck this card, and it's still going to feel amazing to have it in your starting hand. And it's going to feel awful to have one that was played against you that started in someone's hand, and it's going to feel fine to have it played against you when someone top decks it. Uh, the Watcher. Nerfed to... 
I cost zero if you summon five plus allies that, uh, that cost eight or more, and attack obliterate all but three cards in the main deck. Okay, so they have borderline reworked the Watcher because it doesn't win you the game anymore. Um, I had mixed feelings about this. I think... Yeah, this is this is kind of a hot take here. I, I have mixed feelings. I think Lissandra herself is a little overtuned and does a lot because she ha she has tough. She has a decent stat line. Um, when she levels, um, her generation of um, of ice shard is fantastic. Um, she's she's potentially giving you thralls if you care about that. Um, she gives tough to your nexus, and like those ice shards can be absolutely devastating, especially when they're not affecting her or your nexus, and they're affecting your opponent. Um, and in addition to that, she gave you a win condition. However, this win condition is now a win condition that is a not necessarily harder, but comparable to Maokai win condition. Uh, and that, like, Maokai, you can just, you can get him leveled, play him, and just, it goes off. This, you have to play it and then attack with it, which means, um, if your opponent's able to remove it or stun it, um, to prevent your attack, uh, you don't get it. And now, even if you do get it, you don't automatically win the game. Your opponent has time. Um, I don't know, I don't know if I hate this change or not. Because what it does is it essentially completely changes TLC as a deck. Uh, and I know TLC is super frustrating to play against and people don't like automatically losing. Uh, I thought this was fine as I win the game. I just thought the requirements for how it won you the game weren't strict enough. I thought that the uh, attack should be either a, uh, a thing that goes on the stack and can be countered. Or should it be a Nexus Strike? Or should be, um, you know, more costly, like they, they have increased the cost of playing this unit a little bit. Um, but I thought that I win the game when doing this was okay, uh, flavor-wise. I just thought they needed to fix how easy it was to make that event occur. Now this won't automatically win you the game. Um, Beforehand, you could already kind of hold off the Watcher by shuffling stuff into your deck after it attacked you. Now you really can, especially if you're only shuffling one at a time, because you essentially you'll shuffle one, and then if you happen to draw the one that you were able to shuffle, um, such as playing a champion, um, then it won't obliterate it the next time either. Um, yeah, we'll see. I think TLC might still see play with this change. But it might have to change what it looks like a little bit because um, killing you with damage becomes a little bit more important. Uh, knowing that that uh, that they don't get to automatically win the game anymore, um, provided you didn't have one of you know the things I was discussing about. Um, and three is better than four in that uh, they only get one turn to attack you and uh, kill you if they can't shovel something into their deck. So it reads, your opponent gets one more turn and then you win the game, technically speaking. So I think I think you will still see some play. I think... Uh, um, I think it's still fine. Um, I just kind of wish that the changes they had made hadn't been to this part of the, of the text and had been to this part of the text. Um, but I do understand auto-losing feels bad, and that's, you know, Fiora got nerfed way back when for the same reasons, is that uh, people don't like losing the game automatically, and uh, it really feels bad when you do. Raza getting a minor buff, uh, plus one, plus one. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, this might see playing a deck somewhere at some point. Um, I've considered playing a deck that uses uh, the Shroom card that if you slayed enough units, 
to AoE with this, but they're both so expensive that it's kind of difficult to fit both in the deck, and so every time I want to play that Shroomah card, I play it, and I don't play the Raza, even though the Raza you can consistently trigger. Uh, given that this is now a better stat line, it's a little bit more tempting to play it, uh, in addition to, if not in the next, in instead of, um, doesn't really have a great home at the moment though, because, um, the decks that really care about doing these kill effects for the most part, um, are still going to be your Thresh Nasus. Thresh Nasus is still going to play basically the way it has been playing, um, so these top end cards are a bit clunky for them to run. But if you wanted to build a deck that was more controlling and then use Atrocity as finishers, uh, like an older uh, Gen 1 version of the control that we used to have, um, this is now better at doing it because it's a better target for uh, for an Atrocity. It is a bigger threat that you're playing down on 8. Um, I don't think it pushes this card over the top. It might results in it seeing more play, it really, once again, depends on if the format slows down enough for an 8-drop um, that sometimes kills units if you're able to make sure something dies on, you know, your side this turn. Um, yeah, I think Ross is a good card. I thought Ross was a good card at 7-5. I think it's still a good card. Uh, I think it's just a card that is format dependent on both uh, the speed that you're allowed to play and uh, the type of things you're playing against, because if you're playing against a bunch of stuff that doesn't play very many enemies, then that doesn't matter either. Uh, Dusk Rider, getting a buff to a 3-5. Um, I don't know how I feel about this buff, honestly. Um, the reason I don't play Dusk Rider has nothing to do with um, the attack line, especially because if you're playing it in a deck with Nightfall, um, which is, you know, its theme, it can be pretty big. The reason I don't play Dusk Rider is 5 mana is very expensive for this, especially where you could be playing a Nocturne for 4 mana, um, hypothetically leveling him as he plays, giving all of your units Fearsome and winning the game on 4. If they want this to feel like a Fearsome finisher card, um, it really needs to be a 4 drop, I think. And... Um, I understand they're a little bit concerned with it being a 4-drop, making it too consistent, but um, let's assume that you, you play one Nightfall card a turn, starting on turn 2, because you're probably not playing 0 mana cards to trigger Nightfall on turn 1. Um, or the ones you're playing aren't playable in turn 1 unless you're on uh, unless you're uh, not on the attack, at least. So uh, we'll, just, we'll assume, at least on average... Turn 2 is the beginning of Nightfalling. Um, and you're only going to Nightfall once in turn 2 at most. For the most part. Obviously, you can have some nutty draws. I'm going to map this based on what I could perceive to be an average, uh, not a nutty draw. So you Nightfall turn, uh, once on turn 2. You Nightfall once on turn 3. Then you play this on turn 4 based on my buff. With Nightfall. I, I think it includes itself. Which means that's plus three. Which means on four it would have been a 5-5 five, five fearsome on old stat line. Now it would be a 6-5 fearsome on new stat line. I think it could have stayed the 2-5 based on what I'm recommending. But I think a 5-5 five, five fearsome on turn four that's competing with a champion for a slot... But you're incentivized to hold it for as long as possible to get bigger stats. I think is fine. Because you're not you're not playing this. Like, this attack, that doesn't matter. The decks that are going to play this right now, they're either going to play it as a finisher for just a little bit more poke. Or they're going to play it really, really, really late in the game. And the thing is, is Nightfall, at least at the time I'm making this review doesn't have a very controlling um, archetype. Most of the Nightfall cards, not all of them, but most of them, are very aggressive cards. Most of the Nightfall champions are very ag aggressive champions. And what you're doing is you're rushing down your opponent. This doesn't do enough of a rush down. In fact, if they were to keep this cost at 5, but change Fearsome to Overwhelm, I think that this card would then see play as a finisher in Nightfall. Fearsome does not guarantee a hit, though, 
and that really hurts the value of this card as a finisher unless an archetype ends up existing that allows you to split up your um train of thought unless an archetype exists that allows nightfall to slow down and play a more controlling matchup but um at this time there just aren't enough nightfall cards that want to take their time for this card to feel good enough because this card is better the more time you take and uh so it's a great top deck nightfall card in the late game but most of the time if you hit the late game with nightfall you've lost because you didn't win the early game with an aggro deck uh give it overwhelm or reduce or reduce its cost this one point boost isn't going to change this card seeing play if this card starts seeing play it's because nightfall got some new support cards and not because this card got a one attack buff this one attack buff does not help with anything except making it able to block other fearsome units without needing to trigger nightfall uh understand for five mana for the intent of the card uh still unplayable in my opinion unless you are playing it in some late game nightfall atrocity deck type thing that doesn't exist and i struggle to think would exist the only thing i can even think of that you would do would be level nocturne but then use nocturne as a control card to lower stats by playing a bunch of tokens but that just does not make sense to me when if you're building a deck that can level nocturne efficiently you could just win the game attacking Escape Abomination got a nerf to two health. Um, I think it's about time for this. I think this card has tormented uh, the game for very long. Um, it used to be a 4-4. It got nerfed to 4-3. Now it's a 4-2. Uh, I think people are still going to be very happy to play it because it's still a 4-2 that they're getting for sacrificing a unit that they're playing on two and playing another big body unit. You can still swing for disgusting damage numbers. It's just putting a little bit more risk to the reward which I think is completely fair. Uh, doesn't make it unplayable, makes it more fair to remove, more fair to trade into, because uh, your opponent's more likely to have a blocker on two that can actually trade with this. Um, yeah, completely reasonable. I think it'll still see plenty of play. It might, it might stop it from being an auto three of. I think it's still going to see play, though. Stalking Shadows getting nerfed to three. I understand their decision for doing this because of the combo decks. My concern is the nerf to three does not hurt the combo decks in a meaningful way because the combo decks do not care about the mana that early very often. This does hurt Nightfall decks though, which already weren't seeing very much play. Um, I think it's still playable for Nightfall, but uh, it's disappointing that this is how they decided to address this card because it doesn't affect the decks that they want to affect the way they're trying to affect them. Uh, the Scythria combo deck is still going to be happy to play this card. They're not going to care. They're spending the extra mana. It's very common that Scythria deck doesn't play anything against me unit-wise until turn three or four anyways, which means they're often going to have spell mana available to them at three, on turn three, even if they play a three drop. And they don't have a lot of spells in the deck, so they're not giving up a ton of spell uh, of opportunity by paying that one extra point to spell mana. Um, I think this is going to overall hurt the wrong decks. Uh, if they wanted to nerf this card in a way that hurt combos, they needed to change the wording on this to only affect a certain range of um, costs. Like if you find a follower that costs six or less or um, give you a slightly more shallow dig or make it faction specific so that you can hit one part of the combo but not the Scythria part of the combo, something along those lines. Um, as is, um, I I think it's going to affect how much this card sees play in some decks, but not the combo decks that I think Riot thinks they're acknowledging. Um, yeah, interesting decision here. Because I don't think the frustration anyone had was that someone was playing this 
and then dropping a Nightfall card, like, on three and, um, you know, very typically healing for two or draining for two or, um, you know, triggering an Aphilios. Um, and that also hurts, you know, Aphilios a little bit more. He just got a buff, but uh, this is one of the cards I would I would care to use in Aphilios deck to, uh, to help me um, trigger Nightfall and then play Aphilios. It does help they just gave Nightfall a new really great trigger card um, in Rise of the Underworld. Uh, but unless there's some frustration at the normal non-combo deck level play with this card that I'm unaware of, they aren't hitting the decks they mean to be hitting by nerfing this uh, the way that they nerfed it. And yeah, it might change the game some, but not the way they think it's going to. Uh, I think this is a great buff for this card. Um, the deck it wants to be played in plays big chonky boys. There's no reason this can't be a big chonky boy. It's already worse than the stuff you're going to be doing. You're going to be using it to enable 8-8 eight, eight overwhelms. This thing can still be chump blocked. It just means that now your opponent's more likely to need to want to block it. The 4 damage was a lot less relevant. Uh, I think this takes this card from like fringe playability um, to almost always include if you're playing the deck. It's still a niche card that you're only playing in very specific archetypes, but it is now a niche card that you are very happy to have in those archetypes. And if you wanted to play this as a big finisher in Shruma, outside of those archetypes, you hypothetically could now, because those instant centuries, uh, you may not know it if you've never played it, but they can also find you landmarks. People just don't use it for that because the progress of countdown four is bonkers and super powerful but uh yeah you can play this as a seven seven for eight that gives you a little bit of card value in hand now uh and it wouldn't be awful i still think it's gonna see the play and the the thrall decks and less likely to be played as a bomb and anything else but uh i think this is completely fine i like the, i like the thrall archetype a lot actually um i know that they can be frustrating to play against if they go off but honestly you if you play a couple landmark removal cards and you can play cards that remove landmarks or do something else like draw you, draw you a landmark or damage a unit uh you don't have to feel that bad about it because most of the time they can't instantaneously complete their landmarks before you can respond and by the time they can do that using the the clock hand um you still get a opportunity to respond after they summon the clock hand, and it's late enough in the game that they've earned it at that point. Uh, yeah, cool buff. Totally fine with it. Uh, people who play it are going to be happy about it. People who don't play it, um, you know, will either not care or be a little unhappy. Uh, Roz Bloodmane is getting a one, plus one, plus one buff. Um, I actually think this buff is okay. This unit was already really strong. I think a 6-6 six, six Fearsome that gets minus 2 to everything for the round was already very strong. But at the cost of 7, in Shruma, when you're, where you're competing against a lot of overstatted minions that do a lot for a little, um, I think that it just couldn't fit. It might fit in as a one-of now that it has just a little bit more power. It can be a finisher a little bit more reliably. Uh, but honestly, I think this fits best with something like um, like Nasus. But if you were to play this with Nasus, you would give up um, you would give up the Targon end of the Nightfall cards. And it's too expensive um, so for Nasus to con or why am I saying Nasus? Whoa, brain. I think this would combo better with um, something like Nocturne, but you would be giving up half of the Nightfall cards um, that you would have access to for Nocturne, and Nocturne, once again, wants to be an early aggression deck. Um, and so I, I don't see it going in with that. Uh, Fearsome as an archetype um, tends to be fairly aggressive, and this is an unaggressive Fearsome card because it's so, um, so expensive, so late game. So I still don't think this is actually going to see any play, but it might see fringe play with that one point boost. Um, and don't get me, it's attack, it does win you the game, but the issue with this card was never its stat line, it was its cost. If they want this to be a fearsome finisher, they need to give this a, a lower stat line and a lower cost. Uh, and 
I understand why they haven't because it would be very, very frustrating for your opponent to have like a turn five or maybe even six of this. I think at six, this might be fair enough and playable enough with that effect, even at the six stats. I think at five, this card would be overpowered regardless of the stat line. You could give this thing three attack. I think at five with the minus two and a fearsome deck, it'd be such a strong finisher. It'd be ridiculous. Um, but as is and as designed, um, I don't think it's really playable. Maybe Mono Sharuma specifically will want it just because they do have to fill out deck slots. But um, yeah, um, I won't be playing any decks, I don't think. I don't I don't have any cool meme ideas built around it. Um, maybe someone will. Interesting. Doomkeeper gets not necessarily a nerf or a buff. It's a lateral change. They are inversing its attack and its health which is a minor nerf to the aggression of the card. So it will hurt Aurelia Azir and it will hurt Thresh Nasus. Um, it's not going to hurt them a lot, though. It means that, you know, Thresh Nasus getting the nuts is going to be, I hit you for four in turn one instead of I hit you for five in turn one, um, which will feel a little bit better for opponent, but still feel pretty bad. And now it can actually chump block a 1-1, one, one, which, depending on how aggressive the format is, is a minor buff. And because of um, because of the changes we listed above on uh, things like Make It Rain is a buff to the card in that degree as well. Um, I think it's still playable. I think decks that still want to summon a lot of units and decks that want to sacrifice units are still going to play this card. Um, it's just going to be a little bit worse at killing your stuff and a little bit worse at hurting you and a little bit better at blocking little things um still completely playable um we'll see if that one point makes enough of a difference across enough matches um but yeah it's a change mountain <clears throat> Mount mountain sovners uh changed from a two five to a four five uh, i really like this change because this card was awful like yeah it's supportability could be really potent because you could get like a, a plus four plus four on it but it's a very conditional plus four plus four it is i must have two other units and at least one of those two other units must be a support ally and that support ally must be positioned to support another, that other ally uh for this to go off um at least at this stat line, it can maybe have an impact on the board if you play it on curve. As a 2-5, it was just too understated, too easy to trade with. Um, you might not got a kill on it when it attacked the first time. You might have gotten a buff out, um, and it is a grant, so it is permanent. But um, it is very likely, likely you'd be able to block it and not lose a unit for blocking it by the time it came down, even if you couldn't kill it. Now at least it might trade with a unit um, when it comes down. Um, I still don't know how much play it's going to see. It's still a really expensive card that, as I just stated, has a double circumstance for its full effect to come into play. Uh, I don't know that a plus two plus two for a single ally is worth it on average to play the card. It might see play as a one of a, or a two of if support sees a little bit more play since the tarot buffs, ha buffs happened. But um, as a whole, I'm still a bit pessimistic about the card. I think what this card needed more than the stats is it needed a cost reduction. If they had reduced its cost to four and left it a two five, I think it would have been more playable and still been relatively fair because of its overall requirements to make use of its buffs. Uh, I understand their concern with doing that, though, because costs have a major impact on the game and attack has a smaller impact on the game. I am just concerned that that attack change is not a large enough one for this card to increase in value enough to play this 5-drop in, in a deck that uh, has its bomb as a 4-drop. Uh, giving this one extra health, I, I don't think this is playable still. Um, I think if they want Sun Guardian to even be considered to be played in a deck, outside is this a random aggro finisher, but the thing is Targon aggro isn't really a thing. So people don't care about having an 8-8 Overwhelm. 
Um, if Targon aggro becomes a thing, then maybe this could see some play because 88 overall for six is a good finisher. Um, it's just, I, I don't see too much of that going on. I guess you could, you could synergize it with Noxus, right? And then use this as a finisher. But even then, like at that point, I'd rather just use a uh, Darius. Be like, oh, you're already at 10. Got 10 attack. Overwhelm. Um, I guess you could use this as some redundant Darius is, but I digress. I don't think this is very playable unless it sees plays a one or two of in a aggro archetype that doesn't currently exist, to the best of my knowledge. I think if they wanted this card to see play, they need to change this wording to say grant me plus four plus four. If it were a permanent buff, I think this would see play. If this were a cheaper unit, I think this would see play, even without the uh, the change down here. The issue here is, is that this is one of the most expensive Daybreak units you can play. And Daybreak tends to do somewhat controlling things like stunning your opponent's board. And while he can kind of be a finisher because you've been poking your opponent by do while doing that, um, he doesn't really fit their theme the way um, he should. He needs to do other things. And I know, like, you could play... Um, you can play the Leona spell that triggers all the daybreaks and give him plus six, plus six, and overwhelm. And then he's a ten attack overwhelm. But... The way Leona decks function, he's still just a really awkward play. That's a lot of mana to, co to commit, especially when you're going to be wanting to sit on top of responses because Leon Leona decks like to be a little bit more controlling and a little bit more reserved. And having the time to play this uh, can be really awkward. And I just, I don't see the card being played in, uh, with a one health difference. I don't think the one health is why people aren't playing this card. They are, woo! Whoops. They are buffing star shaping. I really hope that means they're going to be nerfing some of the invoke cards. And this is their way of saying, like, we still want star shaping to be good. But invoke is worse because it does heal for less. Okay. Okay. The ch oh, hold on. I, I misread that. I... My brain saw the 5 to 4 and thought they were talking about cost. They are not buffing this. They are just nerfing it. They are taking away one point of healing. Okay, uh, it's a small tweak. Um, I think Star Shaping is still incredible. I think it's still going to see a lot of play. I think that one point will come up occasionally, and most of the time it won't matter. A lot of the time when you're playing a Targon deck and uh, you get to the point where you want to use Star Shaping, you're like, wow, my opponent hasn't hit my face yet because I kept generating value and they had to keep trading with me and I kept removing their stuff. And I guess I'm going to heal this unit for two instead of five. And uh, sometimes it will come up and it will have minor implications for um, the healing archetype, which is unfortunate for them because that deck wasn't very good to begin with on average. Um, but I don't think as a whole this nerf is going to matter very much. I think star shaping is going to be fine, and it's going to be played everywhere so, uh, that wants to play uh, anything that invokes and or heals still. Um, they nerfing the Serpent to a 1-1. Um, I understand why this is happening. My concern is that the purpose of the Serpent has now changed from I am a removal unit to I am a distraction that will not kill what I'm pulling. I think I would have rather seen them adjust this in the opposite direction and been like, this cost one, but it has one more attack. Uh, so you don't get a free blocker that you can dig for any anymore, but the trade-off is it can kill stuff a little bit better. Um, and I know it can sometimes be a bit frustrating to play against, but this isn't the issue in the game. The issue people have with Targon is that Targon generates a million cards in value, and all of the high-end cards like cascade and get better and better and better the more that you've played Celestials. Uh, and it's, it's really the high-end cards that are just you know, I have Spell Shield, and I got plus nine when you played me, so I'm going to swing at you for your entire Nexus amount uh, with Overwhelm, and you need to play 
at least two things on me to try to answer this. Um, there are times the Serpent can be frustrating to play against, but it's really not the low-end cards that people are mad about when they fight against Targon. And if what they're trying to do is say Targon's weaker on the low end, I don't think this is a big enough change. They didn't really nerf that many Targon cards. They said they want to have tar Targon to have weaknesses. Taking away one point of healing and one attack point is not a weakness so far. Like, Targon's still going to function the same way Targon functions, almost identically, except that this is going to stop killing units instead of distract units. But a lot of time, that's all you need it to do if you're playing it with a big boy. And if you're not playing it with a big boy, if it's just like, oh, I struggled to get to the late game a little bit more, the combined effort might be enough. But I don't think it is, because most of the time, it's not the Serpent that saves you. It's things like this guy. And uh, taking one attack from him, um, it will hurt them a little bit, but I don't think it's enough. I don't think they hit Targon the way they should have. I think they needed Targon to um, have the big units potentially not scale off of playing extra celestials or um, less of them have spell shield or some difference there. I think on the low end, for the most part, they were fine. The things might be right to, to lower its attack a little bit because it does give you value with both the lifesteal and the, the invoking. Um, but them saying we want Targon to be weaker at some things and better at others and then not nerfing any of the things that make them well-rounded... Um, Technically speaking, because, like, I don't consider this a big enough nerf to matter um, when what matters about this text is the invoke. Uh, the healing only really, really matters if you're playing a deck that doesn't have the ability to live long enough to get to that. But most of the time, you're fine. You have early game cards, and you can even jump block, and that's enough. Region Road updates... Extending levels makes sense. They always do that when they add new champions, uh, adding new labs for a bunch of the people. Uh, prologue update. This patch brings a big update to the prologue, the part of the new player's journey. This happens after the first four tutorials. A lot has been added to Legends of Runeterra. Unlocking modes step by step. There are a lot of modes in uh, Legends of Runeterra, many of them expecting a more advanced understanding. I wouldn't suggest Ultra Rapid Draw. Yeah, that's fair uh, for your second game. Uh, new prologue introduces uh, the mode in a more structured way so players can practice against AI, um, use challenges to learn and then unlock PvP before finishing with the rest of the competitive advanced modes, blah, blah, blah. So basically, just they're, they're letting people learn the game more before letting them do the modes. Some people will appreciate that. Some people will hate being forced to do tutorials first. Depends on the person. Um, okay, cool. More deck rewards. Uh want new players to be able to have a lot of variety. We've added four additional complete decks as a reward into the, the prologue and a few and fewer random card capsules. So players will end the prologue with a total of seven different starter decks. A discounted, a discounted a watery grave deck is also available in the store designed for new players who want to explore more options. Current players will also get all the de uh, of the new decks in their loot inbox. If you don't already have the cards, if you already own three of each, you'll still get the deck list in your deck collection. If you have the space... Huh. I wonder if they're going to... It doesn't mention, I wonder if we're going to get gems for having the extra copies. It'd be nice if we did, but uh, if we don't, we don't. And then they're adding some card backs and, st and some emotes and stuff. Uh, some bundles. The important thing I wanted to discuss in the patch notes, though, uh, were the changes. And uh, this ended up being an extremely long video, so I'm going to split this into two parts. Um, thanks for tuning in and caring about my input. And I will... Um, have more videos out later. Um, Tuesdays and Thursdays are my planned upload days for YouTube. Thanks. Bye.